right, welcome back. Uh, in this episode, in this uh, branch, um, we're going to, what are we gonna do? We're going to make a wrapper function. Uh, so this will be a fun part where this interface is really going to um, stay the same, more or less. We're going to uh, give it, or I guess we will change this eventually, but now we're really just going to change the implementation details where this public interface is going to stay the same, um, but we're going to refactor the, the guts of it to be a little more um, functional and composable in a way that will leave us uh, in a position to really expand and change this and add new functionality over time. So one thing you'll notice is that books is now our last argument. So we have our like functions first, data last, and year is not a function, but it's a piece of data that purely supports a function. It's not really uh, anything being transformed. Books is the thing that we're interested in transforming. So we have that coming last in the argument or in the function signature, but then we need it right away um, to, to call filter because we have a filter method. In general, we'll just say that a method is something that you call a dot notation and a function is uh, something that is just freestanding. So let's write a little wrapper function called filter that takes its predicate function first again, returns true or false. And we're just going to curry straight up. Like we're not going to refactor. We're just going to assume currying because it uh, helps with function composition. So filter needs its predicate function and it needs its array that it's going to call filter on. Um, and we'll just call this uh, the list of X's because uh, it could be anything. And then uh, we'll, once we have the X's, we'll call X's filter and we'll pass the predicate. And so this is point three style just to review that. Um, these two copy here. Uh, these two are functionally the same. So here I have an anonymous function that just takes its sole argument and passes it to another function. So I can just use that function that's waiting to receive x. So I take a predicate, then the x's, and then I call then I call x's dot filter predicate. So what I can do then is instead of calling books dot the books dot filter method. I can use the filter function. And as you can see, it's two steps. So it first take the predicate, which is this part. And then that returns a function that takes the collection. In this case, we have books. And what's nifty, we'll go ahead and run a test on that real quick. Yarn. I keep doing that. I should just write yarn test. Perfect. So the spec still um, is satisfied. And now we have the same pattern that I described up here with point freestyle. I'm gonna sneeze here. Oh. oh, excuse me. All right, so um, now we have the same pattern where we have a function up here in parentheses um, there. And we all we're doing with that function is taking its one and only argument books and then applying it to a function at the end. So this here itself filter is a function and since it is a function, we don't actually have to make an explicit reference to the argument that's being delegated to it by an anonymous function. So now when we take, we take a year and we kind of preload it into year uh, or into this predicate function, and now filter is just waiting for its collection of objects. In this case, it will technically be a, it's not really even called books anymore it's just going to be the array that we pass to it that has the book data in it okay so um and, and then at that point you're like hey what why are we still calling it a book which is a great point so we'll just say it's really just an item and uh run the test that passes that's great and um, what time are we at? Let's see. Yeah. 4.33. Let's make this a little longer. So now that we have this pattern of creating wrapper functions that turn object oriented or imperative, you know, this is not really super imperative, but it is object oriented because we have data that has its own behavior tied to it, as opposed to a function that um, just takes inputs and produces some output. Um, under the hood, you know, it's still 
dot notation and it's still probably a for loop like deep deep but we can interact with a much higher level interface that expresses better intent so when i look at this function now where year uh, all i could do is say oh it takes a year property and then i after just a little bit of time of, of recognizing common tra transformation functions, I know that filter is going to take an array of certain length and return another array, another array uh, that has the same length or less than based on how many uh, elements satisfy or return true uh, in the predicate function. So we're starting to get to this place where we're looking more at the flow of what things do instead of how they actually work. And we can always pop into these subcomponents when we need when we do need to figure out how they work but the overall application logic is much more high level uh, and declarative so um, in functional programming everything is a function and by my count i see this is not a function calling item dot year and the uh, explicit uh, equality uh, evaluation is also not a function so let's write some functions that do a similar thing as filter that Really, we're just making these wrappers to um, to uh, produce a functional, a composed form or a composable form of dot notation and um, things like keywords and operators. So this one we'll call equals, and it will take an A and then a B, and then we we'll simply call it A equals B. So instead of using this function, uh, we're going to call equals and i almost made a mistake there we it's not comma separated values we apply the function to one argument and then apply that returning function to another argument okay so in this case we're just getting the value of the year property and then storing the year in it make sure that still works and it does again so we haven't changed the spec we're just starting to uh write the code in a way that's going to be more flexible over time and a little more expressive. And now we still have this uh, item dot year syntax and really what dots do is they call properties. So we'll just make this function called prop and it's going to take a property name. Um, we'll just say prop name and then it's going to take an object. And then because it's dynamic, we can't call object dot prop name so we're going to use bracket syntax where we'll actually uh, evaluate the value of prop name and then uh, use the getter uh, the getter method on that object to get the value of that prop and now we can say prop year item and this looks kind of gross now but let's just make sure it passes it does so what's interesting here is it looks pretty much gross um in uh i like to call it parentheses salad so it's just like okay i'm opening them i'm closing them i'm opening them right away all this stuff um but what's cool is now we are working only with functions so equals is a function prop is a function uh, the first application of prop returns yet another function and the first application of equals returns another function and filter takes uh, a predicate function and filter itself is a function that receives a function and then returns a function that takes a list of whatever and then calls a uh, filter on it. So lots of functions and uh, this allows us to um, reach for the like, the, in my opinion, the most beautiful part of the function composition toolkit, which is going to be uh, a tool we're gonna build called pipe. And that'll, we'll save that for the next episode. Um, but the, the high level goal here is that we want to compose all these functions in an automated way. So right now we're doing it manually where um, we basically start with the item and then uh, we, we're, we're, we're waiting on the item here. And so we evaluate, I believe the order of execution here would be, we would call prop.year or prop year and then we would apply the result of that to item. So we would get the value of the items year. And then at that point equals would this entire, the inside of this would be evaluated and then equals would be applied to that. So then we would apply this partially applied equals to year. That's coming last right now. 
and um, to prep us for using automated function composition, I'm actually going to change the order of these arguments. So right now, year comes after the prop function. And instead, we're going to say, hey, equals year. And then similar to what we did with books, we're trying to move item to the very end. And we'll get to why that is helpful. But we're going to stop here. Um, make sure the tests still pass. They do. This uh, branch was essentially, uh, this is the fifth episode. And we, what do we do? Um, we made wrapper functions. Let's call it that. Cool. And we didn't have to change the test, which is really cool. We're just um, building up a more flexible API under the hood. And we made a filter, an equals, a prop. All of these are wrapping um, plain objects and or values and creating these composable forms of them. And we are now in a position to um, reach for automated function composition, which we'll get to in the next episode. Uh, we won't describe them all. Mm -hmm. so they can look at the rest of All right. Thank you very much, and we'll see you for the next episode.